Hi. <laughs> you may be wondering, what's going on in the world today? Uh, we've done a lot of videos about steering behaviors, but there's two things about the steering behaviors that we haven't considered that are perhaps the most important and earth-shattering, exciting parts of working with steering behaviors. What are those two things? Number one, and number one is what this video is really going to be about, we have, all of the videos have been individual behaviors. I need to follow this path, I need to follow this flow field, I need to seek this target, I need to catch this thing, flee from this thing. What we want to look at are group behaviors. Uh, what, is a steering, what, what, is it, what does it mean to have a steering behavior where the desired velocity is determined based on the behavior of other vehicles in one a vehicle's given neighborhood? That's what we really need to look at. I don't know if you remember, we started looking at thinking about Breitenberg vehicles and looking at Casey Reese's process compendium. All, a lot of these behaviors involve entities sniffing out other entities around them and making a choice to move based on that. That's what is going to allow us to ultimately build these unpredictable, complex systems. Simple elements, simple rules, globally intelligent and amazing and uh, exciting emergent be behavior. Okay, so I, I'm filled with hyperbole today. Exciting! <sighs> okay, um, so um, this is, this for, th that's one thing. Number two is we haven't actually looked at what happens when we combine two behaviors. What if you want to both follow a path and also seek a target? Or es escape from your neighbor but, but um, um, while you're on a flow field? So that's, that's what we're going to look at in kind of um, the next video. But, 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 but what do we have here? So here is uh, my own personal, everybody, I think I said this already, everybody should have a favorite steering behavior. So pause the video, take a moment and try to decide what is my, it's like your favorite color, your favorite steering behavior. My favorite, just favorite steering behavior is queuing. So this is a group behavior. It, it's actually a combination too. Number one, there's a desired velocity of making it through this doorway, but there's another desired velocity which has to do with not running into your neighbor. So you see this really nice behavior of all of these vehicles going toward Towards this doorway, but also stopping and kind of jockeying for space around that doorway. So how do we implement first, before we can get to combining them, how do we even implement a group behavior? So let's take a moment. The first one that I want to look at is a simple behavior known as alignment. So what is alignment? I am recording this video. What is alignment? Alignment means my desired velocity is the velocity of my neighbors. I wish to align my speed and direction with how my neighbors are moving. So you can imagine how that might play out. If this vehicle is moving like this, and this vehicle is moving like this, ultimately, eventually, they would hopefully align with each other and be moving in the same direction. How is it that we can make, make this work? I mean, you know, it's, it's not so complicated. If I only have these two vehicles, we could say, hey, what is this vehicle's desire? This is its current velocity. What is this vehicle's desired velocity? Well, this vehicle's desired velocity is that one's. It wants to align with its neighbor. And this vehicle's desired velocity is that one. So they each have this desired velocity. They steer, and we end up getting of ultimately the same. They do this every frame, the same velocity moving in the same direction. It's a bit more complicated. If this is a given vehicle, let's forget about its current velocity for a second, and there are several other vehicles around it. What is this vehicle's desired velocity in the case of alignment? In the case of alignment, I'll write this all out, a vehicle's desired velocity is the average, I'm going to put this, uh, it's not quotes, it's stars and hearts. I always want to draw hearts. It's the average velocity of all neighbors. Now, what does all neighbors mean? This is an interesting question. Remember when we started thinking about autonomous agents, we, were taught, we, we, we said an autonomous agent has a limited ability to perceive its environment. So all neighbors could mean every vehicle in the entire world. <laughs> like, imagine if you could do alignment globally. That would be kind of interesting. Or it might mean just the things that it can see within a certain distance or within a certain range in front of it. Etc. So, okay, but let's start with something simpler: average velocity of all of its neighbors. How do you get the average velocity of a whole bunch of of of, of vectors? Add all the vectors up. I add ten vectors together. Divide by ten. So let's take a look at this in action in code for a moment. 
Here we are over here. We close out Reynolds. We go back to uh, oops. Go back to alignment, and let's take a look at this running. Uh, run. So you can see very very quickly all of these vehicles or circles are now moving in the same direction. And as I add more, they each are starting with a random velocity. You can see that the, the global kind of direction starts to change based on some new ones. Ultimately, there's not enough of them. But you can see that they very quickly kind of like fall into place. And this is an odd result. We almost feel like you're panning over a scene, right? When they're all moving at exactly the same speed and direction, it almost feels like they're still, but we're panning. Anyway, um, so how does this work in the code? This is actually a pretty simple algorithm. If you look at the vehicle, what is the vehicle doing? It's saying, hey, let me look, let me start with a sum of zero. Let me look at every other vehicle. Let me add all the velocities together and let me divide by the total number of vehicles. Uh, it's fine. I'm going to leave it this way. Uh, there's, a, there's some extra stuff here. Like it seems a little weird um, that we're counting how many vehicles when we know the size of the array list, but we need that. It, because we're going to add something to this in a moment that's going to make it much more interesting. But you can see my desired velocity is the sum of the velocity of all of my neighbors and normalize that sum, um, set it to maximum speed. Oh, that's weird. That's interesting. I didn't realize I was doing this in this example. But what we're actually doing here is if you look at this, this is an interesting question is we're saying, hey, it's not the average velocity of all of its neighbors. I just want to move at maximum speed in the direction of the average direction of all my neighbors. That's one. So something you could try doing is actually to not um, always try to move at maximum speed in your neighbor's direction, but move also according to their average speed. Um, uh, so you'll get very different results, but that's something you could try with this. Okay, so, but what is it that I really want to look at here? Notice again how the entire group moves instantly almost at the, aligned to the same direction. Now, this is because we haven't really limited the vehicle's ability to perceive its environment. Every vehicle in this world can see all of the vehicles. But what I would like to do, which I think will be a more flexible and interesting simulation, is say, OK, here are a whole bunch of vehicles. This is a world of vehicles. And let's say I'm, this is the vehicle we're working on right now. It can only see other vehicles within a certain distance. So what it's actually doing is moving according to the average velocity of all of the neighbors within a certain distance. How do we do that? As we're looping through, we could find the distance between all of them and check, is the distance less than some radius, some line of sight, some um, neighbor distance, we could call it. So let's look at actually adding that to this program in real time, a little live coding here. So First of all, we have that distance already. So we have the distance between my location and the other vehicle's location. And what I can do here is I could say, uh, if that distance is, it's a little trick here, if that distance is greater than zero, when is the distance going to be equal to zero? I suppose there could be two vehicles somehow by accident in perfectly exactly the same location. But we're dealing with floating point values here. That's going to be so rare. We, at, we check to make sure as long as the distance is greater than zero because generally we don't want a vehicle to align with itself. This doesn't really matter so much in this example, but when we look at separation where you don't want to bump into your neighbors, you don't want to try to separate from yourself. It's very painful. I, as soon as I wake up in the morning I feel like I just want to separate from myself, but you know, I, don't, I, don't, I never figured out how to do that yet. Okay, so as long as that distance is greater than zero or less than some neighbor distance, and what is that neighbor distance? I don't know. What's a good number? Shout it out. Just shout out a number. You're in your you know, cave with your hood on and like the glowing light of the laptop as you're watching this video. <laughs> shout out a number. Um, OK, 30. Uh, no, 50? 100. 100. OK. Uh, let's try 100. And let's, um, so let's just check as long as the distance is within 100 pixels, what happens here. So let's run this. And we can see pretty quickly again, like I don't know if you saw, we got a lot of the same location, but you can start to see there's a few like subgroupings as the neighbors kind of find each other and get close. 100 was kind of a bad number to pick. Let's actually just bring this all the way down to 25. And you can see, look at all of these subgroupings as they only now are able to align, move this over here, with their neighbors. And I add with their sort of more immediate neighbors. 
We add a whole lot of vehicles. It's hard to like look and talk. Um, so you can see we're getting here an even more interesting, I would say, to me this is a little bit more visually interesting. It feels more lifelike somehow. Um, and it's also kind of um, a little bit of a surprise that we get these clumps. So you can see eventually the whole world is moving in the same direction. But if I run this again, just from the beginning, we can see these little small clumps starting to form. And as the clumps get near, then they align with each other because they're within that distance. OK, so this works pretty well. Um, let's briefly take a moment to just demonstrate separation. Um, and then I think we'll be done with this particular uh, video. OK, so separation. I don't know if you recall, but earlier, several videos ago, we had a behavior called seek, where we had a vehicle and we had the target. And the vehicle's desired velocity was in the direction of the target. Well, so this is seek. We could also have a behavior, we did. Um, I don't know if I demonstrated this, but you could really easily make a fleeing behavior, right? Here's the vehicle, here's the target. What's the desired velocity? In the opposite direction of the target. Seek and flee. Separation is, in fact, a variation on flee. So let's just say right now we have a vehicle, and it has a bunch of other vehicles around it. Maybe this is too many. Let me try drawing this again. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, we have a vehicle, and we have, let's just do two vehicles that are around it. So what can we do? What we could do is say, hey, Here's a desired velocity that is pointing away from this vehicle. Here's a desired velocity that's pointing away from that vehicle. Let's take the average of those two velocities, and we have a desired, and this is our ultimately our seek, I'm sorry, separate, sep, separate desired velocity. So we consider all the vehicles within a certain distance. We create a vector that points away from those vehicles, and then we take the average of all of those. You know, we, that's pretty good. I think we did a good job, but we could make this a little bit better. Let's think about this for a moment. Here's my vehicle. Here is a vehicle that's near me, and here's another vehicle that's near me. Ask yourself the question, which one of these should I be seeking from more vigorously, right? The one that's closer. So we could actually weight the length of that flea force, essentially, that vector. We could scale the vector that's pointing away from the target according to, not the target, away from the other vehicle that's too close according to how close it is. And you'll see that in the algorithm that the, 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 as we're averaging all of these separation forces, the separation forces are weighted according to distance. Now, I should point out that this is not collision avoidance. You might start to think, ah, this is collision avoidance, but it's not. Let me explain to you why. Here is a vehicle, and here is its velocity. Here is a vehicle that's really close to it, and here is another vehicle that's close to it, but not as close. Separ uh, the separation algorithm will cause this vehicle to really want to get away from this one more than that one. Obviously, it's going to get closer to that one, and then it's going to want to move. A collision avoidance algorithm might actually look at where it's going and, is it going and completely ignore this one. So look at take its current velocity into consideration. In separation, we're not looking at whether it's in front or behind. We're just trying to like, create a, a perfect ring of space around ourselves. Which, you know, there's different scenarios which you want for different reasons. But I thought that was an important thing to point out. So let's take a look at this example running in action in processing. <laughs> OK, so we have alignment here. And alignment is, by the way, an extra example that I just added today to the GitHub repository. It's just called alignment. But the separation one, if you're following along in the book, oops, is actually example 6.7. So I'm going to put up example 6.7. And we can just take a look at it. Um, for a second right now um, and just see as I add a bunch of vehicles you can see they're all trying to stay separated from each other you can see none of them are actually running into each other it almost has this kind of um, heating up gas particles like and they get all excited and jittery and moving around in a space sort of thing I don't know if that's what you feel like it looks like so you can see separation at, in action here now let's take a look at the algorithm very briefly if we go into the vehicle class 
And we can see here, we're, what's really important is there is, a desired there is a desired separation. And in this case, every ellipse has a radius. Um, and I'm saying I want to, my desired separation is the radius times 2. And actually R, if I look at how it's being displayed, is not technically the radius. I can fix that right now because I was using it as the diameter. So now if I run this again, right, we can see that this is actually, what's interesting about this is it actually feels like, this almost looks like these things are bouncing into each other now. We've created the illusion of like collision detection and collision resolution, all that stuff that Box 2D did. But in fact, none of that is happening here. What's happening is when they get close to each other, a big force pushes them apart, which is kind of like what happens with the collision. So very similar um, um, outlooks. And in fact, you could probably do some kind of interesting circle packing algorithm here if you had them all different sizes and their desired separation varies according to their sizes. That's a great exercise for you. Try to um, see what happens when you make them different sizes and see if you can have that separation force be weighted according to its size as well. Okay, so, but what I wanted to point out a couple things. One is when I say, if I say R times H, for example, you can see they're really trying to stay further apart. There's, not, there's many of them, so they can't do it perfectly, but that you can see that they're not able to get as close to each other. So that distance that they desire to be separated is, is, is really quite um, important here. Um, and the other thing that we can see here is this is what we're doing again. This is the algorithm that I said. What we're doing is we're making a vector that points from the other, um, from, from me toward, I'm um, sorry, we're making a vector. This is, uh, oh, I'm over here now. This is my location. Boy, I've gone on for a very long time here. This is my location. This is the other location. And separation says the force should be a vector that points in the opposite direction. So we think of it as a force pushing it away. Now we can see that's the calculation that's happening right here in this line of code. And here, look at this. It's, 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 its magnitude is being weighted by distance. We're dividing by distance. So if you divide by a number when that distance is big, that separation force is smaller. When the distance is smaller, that separation force is bigger. We add them all up. We take the average of them. We want to move away at maximum speed. And then we implement steering equals desired minus velocity. So this is, exact, this is very, very similar to alignment. The difference is my desired velocity isn't just a copy of my neighbor's velocities. It's, it's a set of vectors that point away the average. It's, a, it's the average of all the vectors pointing away from my neighbors. And so here we have um, separation. So what's interesting about this and what we're going to look at in the next set of videos is what happens when we start to combine these behaviors? The last example we're going to look at is this flocking example, this simulation of birds flocking, bees swarming, this swarming flocking behavior. In, flag, in fact, flocking is separation, alignment, and one more cohesion. So as an exercise to yourself, you've now seen alignment implemented, separation implemented, implement cohesion. What is cohesion? Cohesion is my desired velocity. Let's, is a vector that points towards the average location of all of my neighbors. So let's say this is all of my neighbors, and the average location is right over here. Each one of these objects' desired velocity should point towards that center location. So see if you can implement that. It's there in the flocking example if you're looking for the solution. And we're going to start looking at how to combine these different steering behaviors in the next video.